Here we go now. Adam McAlvey, he, of course, covers the Brewers, MLB.com. They start a two-game series against the Rays tonight, and they haven't played that well. A couple games back of St. Louis. They don't have a ton of games left of St. Louis either. Keep that in mind, too. Adam says hello. Adam, welcome. It's great to have you with us here today. First off, yep. um, I'm sure they have their reasons, and he wasn't very good over that last week or so. It seems like that hater trade really rocked the Brewer clubhouse, and they were bothered by it. Let me get your thoughts there first. Yeah, I think it came as a surprise, and I know that Craig Council and David Stearns have tried to do the open door thing and explain to players, if there were concerns, what their thinking was. I mean, Chris, it comes to, down to this for me. David Stern's theory of winning the World Series in Milwaukee is to make the playoffs as often as possible. Uh, going all in doesn't guarantee you a championship. It does guarantee you some painful rebuild after that if you're in a town like this, in a market like this. They are not going to do that. They are not going to dive into a five-year rebuild. So they're going to try to do this take as many bites of the apple thing. And look, look at the last couple of years, 2018, within three innings of the World Series, game seven of the NLCS against the Dodgers. 19, they lose to the Nats in the wildcard game on a, that Juan Soto base hit, base hit that took a left turn in the outfield. In 20, they lose to the Dodgers, who win the World Series. Um, and last year, they go out early against the Braves because the Brewers didn't hit, and the Braves go on to win the World Series. David Stern's philosophy is that if you make the playoffs over and over, that gives you the best chance to win the World Series. And they did not want to go uh, to the end with Josh Hader, see him leave in free agency, not get anything for him. They felt like the value was highest with two Octobers to go. And look, you can debate whether that's right or wrong. That's just David Stern's philosophy of how to do this here. And they felt that this was the right time to make that deal. But you're right. It, it I would say it surprised many in the clubhouse. And the results since then have not been good. Whether that's related or not, the results simply have not been good. Uh, Hader was a free agent when? After the 2024 season? Is that when it is? After next season. They had this, they had the oh, rest of the season. 23 season, and sorry. Next. So, look, yep. that's one of the other I, things I, about I, this, Chris, that, that, you know, Josh Hader is, the Brewers say best reliever in baseball, probably Billy Epler there has a different opinion, and those with the Mets have a different opinion who's the best closer in baseball. Um, but, but he was shaky in July. And there's, a, you know, an arm like that, the, the mileage on that arm, look, they, they, they're not going to come out and say they think Josh Hader is on a downslope because he's three-time NL reliever of the year. He's fantastic. But they, they wanted to maximize the value here. And again, they felt like with two Octobers left, this was obviously the time they do it. And they, and they think that they got two really good prospects. They also got Taylor Rogers, another great closer who had a bad July. Yeah, fascinating. I hated to give up the home run to Freeman last year, lefty-lefty, which, uh, you know, they were going to lose probably that series anyway, but in game four in the eighth inning. So let's keep that in mind, too. All right, that's number one. Number two, uh, is it fair to say right now that the Yelich contract, although at the time you couldn't argue with it, might turn out to be a mistake? Well, I mean, that's the risk you take when you sign a player to a, a giant mega contract. Um, Christian Yelich has worked really hard to get back to that level of production. I, I would say that as frustrated maybe as uh, the people inside Miller Park are and maybe in the front office even, uh, Christian Yelich is more frustrated. And he's become a heck of a leadoff hitter. Uh, the on-base percentage is over 400 since he moved to the leadoff spot. He's taking some joy in that. He's a, one of the best base runners in the entire sport, so he's maximizing his legs when he's getting on base all the time. Problem is you don't you don't pay a guy that contract to be a really good leadoff hitter. You pay him to hit in the middle of the lineup and, and you know drive a team that has World Series aspirations. I would say they're making the best of the situation while he tries to work through it, and he's trying everything. The latest is uh, he, he sort of eliminated the leg kick that he's always used. He's trying that toe tap. It's led to a lot of on base recently. It's not led to the power. He's going to continue to try to look for that power. Yeah, I mean, and of course, their offense on a day-in, day-out basis. You know, I know McCutcheon's helped a little bit, and, you know, uh, Adamas has been a good brewer since that trade. He's had a lot of home runs, but they are just not really a good offensive team. And, and if their pitching falters even a little bit, and it's asking a lot out of Woodruff and Burns, on, and they had Peralta on the DL and everything else, IL and everything else, you know, they are good. That's one reason why they're 58 and 50. I mean, they're never going to score a lot of runs. Their margin of error is very slight for them, and their pitching hasn't been as rock solid as it was a year ago. Do I have the team read right, Adam? Let me hear. 
Yeah, look, I mean, their offense is, I would say, confounding more than anything. You look, since the All-Star break, their 10th and run scored in Major League Baseball. They've been scoring runs, um, but they are a very, you, you nailed it. They are a very home run driven club. Maybe that's just baseball today, um, but they rely on having runners on base when they hit their home runs. That's when they win their games. So is that sustainable when you get into October? Uh, and that, that was their downfall last season. They didn't hit at all against the Braves. You nailed that one. So um, they, they, are, they, they look to add a bat at the deadline. I think David Stearns realizes you don't get any credit for trying to add a bat and not doing it. He takes responsibility for that. He's the general manager. But they did look at some names. Andrew Benintendi was a big one early on that the Brewers tried hard to get. And I think the, the, the biggest thing that happened for them at the deadline and maybe other clubs is fewer hitters moved than they expected. And that maybe changed the calculus because I think they knew they were going to take kind of a public relations hit by trading Josh Hader, but they had in mind this series of moves to get some depth in the bullpen. They added Matt Bush, a really electric arm from the Rangers. They added Trevor Rosenthal, who they think is going to be really good end of August, early September when he's back from a ham. They think they're going to have a great bullpen, but then part of this plan was to add a bat as well and try to augment the office and get a little more move the line sort of offense going instead of relying on those two and three run home runs, they weren't able to do it. So David Stern says, that's on me. I'm the GM. It's my responsibility to make those deals happen. And they're just going to have to try to score as many runs as they can with the hitters that they have. They do see ceiling for guys. Willie Adamas is on base percentage, for example, is well under 300. They think he's better than that. And he has what, six, seven weeks or so to show that he can be better than that. Uh, the schedule. No, I haven't looked at it that carefully, but I know they play the Dodgers twice. They also have a series with the Mets uh, St. Louis is done with the Mets, and I believe they're done with L.A. So, I mean, there's, and they have seven with St. Louis, and more of those games, I believe, are in St. Louis. So the schedule, if you like to play that game, and it's 50-something games to go, why even think about it? But if you want to play that game, it is advantageous to the cards. Your thoughts on that, Adam, before you go? Well, look, I think this upcoming week is, is what's worth looking at the schedule. They got the Rays here for two games. The Brewers badly need to kind of turn things around, and they got Freddie Peralta and Brandon Woodruff starting those games. That's a good place to be. And then they go to St. Louis for three games that are huge because St. Louis has flipped this division over the last 10 days or so. The Brewers were four games up uh, when they were in Boston just last weekend. And now they're two games back as we sit here today. So these next, I would say these next five games this next week, especially this big series in St. Louis is going to tell a lot about what trajectory the Brewers take uh, as they kind of get over the shock of this trade deadline and try to get things back on the rails. Excellent job, Adam. Thank you for the help here today. We'll keep in touch. Appreciate you coming on. All right. See ya.